I'm Tom Morris, and I'm the project lead for OpenRefine. Um, I guess the first question is, how many people have heard of OpenRefine? Okay, most everyone. How many people have used it? Maybe half. Okay. Um, so when I've um, taught some of Chris's librarians, this can be hours and days worth of material. I'm going to blow through it in less than half an hour. So um, you're not going to learn very much other than um, kind of get an idea of whether it might be something interesting for you to learn more about later. Um, I will make the slides available online so that you'll be able to, there's some links at the end for resources and tutorials, some screencasts and stuff like that. So, um, and I will be around afterwards if people have questions for me. So I'm an independent consultant. I do software engineering product management. Um, I do a lot of uh, data wrangling stuff, um, which is one of the reasons I have an interest in OpenRefine. Um, I do a bunch of other stuff um, related. Um, just to briefly recap what um, Chris said in terms of the data analysis lifecycle, um, there's kind of this pipeline that we think of in terms of being able to um, find information, um, extract it. So this might be actually locating a data set, it might be getting it extracted from a database, it might be finding it on the web, um, extracting it from an API, and then do a bunch of stuff to kind of figure out what's there. Um, clean it up, get it written, you know, perhaps um, integrate it with other data sources, extend what we have, um, merge multiple data sets together, and then go on, do some analysis. And at the end of the day, if it's a um, data science-y type thing, um, typically we want to be able to tell a story. So there's some type of narrative that we develop at the end and, and present. Um, and although we think of this as a pipeline, it's actually um, kind of an iterative process, and we iterate between um, each of the stages and the entire pipeline as well. Because um, as you delve into things, you'll develop more insights. You might use that to um, modify how you do your extraction or where you look for data, um, additional stuff that you do. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to focus kind of on the front end of this, and I'm going to talk specifically about um, the tool that I'm most familiar with, which is OpenRefine. Um, Chris talked a little bit about provenance, so I'll just touch on that first, and we'll go into this a little bit more later. But um, provenance is super important. I mean, I don't know how many people have done like a whole bunch of munching in Excel um, and then gone back like six months later and said, Hmm, so what was that column anyway? Um, how did I derive it? Um, or where did I get that spreadsheet? Um, was it on a network share or hmm? Um, so first thing you want to do is record where you got the data, um, whether it be the URL that you downloaded it from or you know, the file name or whatever, the date. Um, one of the nice things about OpenRefine is it has a complete undo history, so you can see the entire list of operations that you've done. Um, but that's just one thing to keep in mind in, in terms of being able to, um, A, understand what you did, and B, repeat it later if you need to. Um, and kind of key to this is watching out for anything that's irreversible. Um, so certain types of operations. For example, if you had a bunch of identifiers with leading zeros and you converted them to numbers, they're nominally numeric, um, all those zeros are going to disappear. And if they were significant, they're gone forever because you don't know how many zeros were there um, to add them back in again. Um, if the character encoding is mixed up, um, if it's not um, the character encoding that you thought, then you'll never be able to recover that stuff. So that's another thing to, to really be careful of. So OpenRefine is a power tool for dealing with messy data. So it's kind of like Excel on steroids. Um, it's free. It's open source. It's uh, totally based on your laptop um, or your desktop. So none of the data goes off into the cloud. I'll show you a little bit of it later, um, just a couple minutes. It is browser-based, but the server that the browser is talking to is actually running locally on your machine as well. So uh, data never leaves your machine. You have complete control over it. 
One of the really nice things about it is it has a faceted browsing interface that lets you slice and dice the data in different ways and kind of look at um, how things interact with each other. Um, I'll show you a little bit about that later. It's got a ton of input and output formats, um, a set of really powerful transformations, and as I mentioned, um, unlimited undo. And you actually also can not only undo things and redo them, but you can extract the operation history and rerun it again in the future on you know, a new data set that has the same shape or a refreshed version of the old data set or whatever. Um, it's good for doing um, web scraping and analysis as well. Um, and you can even use it with um, APIs for experimenting with things. We won't be able to get into that today. But um, it came out of a company called uh, MetaWeb. It was originally called Freebase Gridworks. Um, the original work was actually done at MIT in the Simile project. Um, which was a joint project between um, their computer science department and their library department um, ages ago. Um, it's been spun out. It, so then it was uh, Google Refine, and then it was spun out of Google and rebranded Open Refine. In terms of data formats, um, here's the types of things that it supports. It basically supports pretty much anything you can think of. Um, and one of the things that it does is not only supports these things individually, but will do things like um, if you have a URL that points to a zip file that contains a CSV file, you can just give it the URL. It'll download the file. It'll unzip it for you, show you what the contents of the zip is, allow you to select which CSV file you want. It works with. Uh, a bunch of the online formats like uh, Google's spreadsheets and fusion tables, the desktop office products like um, Excel and OpenOffice Calc, and RDF as well if you're doing linked data stuff. In terms of how it compares to Excel, it has a bunch of um, things like the faster browsing that I think make it easier and more intuitive, um, has a, supports a much wider variety of input and output formats, and does a lot of um, useful bulk editing functions, supports up to um, a million rows is typically what we um, say, although people have pushed it a lot further than that, so you can deal with very large files, which sometimes doesn't make Excel very happy. Um, on the downside, it doesn't do the type of um, dynamic formulas that Excel has. So if you take a column and create a new column from it um, using a particular expression, that's a one-time operation. And if you change the original column, your new column won't update. Um, so that's a significant difference between um, what Refine does and what Excel does, because with Excel, um, those things would update dynamically. I'm going to skip this. So one of the first things you want to do when you get a new um, file, particularly if it's, it's one thing if it's something that you're familiar with, if it came out of um, your database or whatever, you kind of know its quirks and things like that. But often you'll have things that you're not familiar with. So the first thing to do is kind of look at um, what types of information is there. Use the fasting tools to kind of see the range of values for things, see if there are outliers. You know, if there are negative years, does that mean BC or is it just an error? Um, are there years in the future? Is that actually legal in this particular thing? Um, look at how things are escaped. If it's, you've got um, HTML entities, character encoding issues. So basically, just kind of orient yourself, figure out what's there, and kind of establish a basis for getting started. There are, actually, let's see if we can, maybe we'll switch over to do a quick demo here. Because um, this will, well, actually, um, yeah. So. 
So here's the um, kind of, of set of things that we can um, import. So we can use local files, we can use URLs, we can just cut and paste data. Um, I'm, we can use things from various Google things. Oops, let's see, there we go. And it'll ask for authorization. So we can quickly load up something that we can look at here. Actually. So this is actually a, um, not a file that, oh, let's do this. This is actually um, a project that was working on before. So we'll just restore it. Okay, so um, this is a relatively small project. It has um, 5,000 records in it. Um, but just to give you an idea of the types of uh, facets that I was talking about, um, we have text facets, numeric facets, timeline facets, and scatterplot facets. Um, so, for example, if we were to look at, oops, So it's being finicky. So for example, here we could look at um, this column that has the number of objects in it. And we can see that um, most of them are like in this range down here. So this is like 0 to 100 is almost everything. But then we've got a few outliers. So we could take a look at um, whether that's something that's reasonable or not and see whether we believe that um, that's something that's valuable. Um, in terms of the undo and redo history, that's um, right here. This is, let's try and make this, there we go. Um, and we can roll back to any point in time here. So we can say, um, Let's undo the last operation, which was creating this um, new column. Undo the last you know, bunch of operations. What are you doing? Finicky trackpad here. OK. Um, the, um, text facet is actually a categorical facet. So if you were to have, for example, um, a list of colors or whatever, you could see um, what the range of values was, how many of each one there were. You could sort them by um, either the label or the count. So you could see what the highest ones were. Um, and there's actually a um, scatterplot facet where you can take um, two different numeric columns and plot them against each other as an XY scatter plot. Um, that, if the columns were, for example, latitude and longitude, you can make a little homemade map where you can kind of see how things lay out geographically. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clustering is one of the uh, more powerful features that is available. And basically, what that does is it looks at um, strings that are similar from a whole range of different metrics and allows you to um, coalesce them together so that they are the same. So this is good for um, doing things like um, finding you know, duplicate author names that have slight name variations. If you were to do a survey, you know, say you did a, a survey of people's favorite bands and let them type in their own rather than having them pick from a list, you could kind of like get rid of all the misspellings and stuff like that. Um, 
There are some character-based ones. There's phonetic matching, um, both English and German phonetic matching, um, and a variety of others. Depending on the type of um, names or, or text strings that you're working with, some work better than the others, and you can switch back and forth between them. Um, regular expressions, I don't know if, if people are familiar with them, but they're um, really powerful, but can be a little bit confusing. Um, it's one of the nice things about the um, transformation um, capabilities in Refine is it gives you immediate preview of everything that you're doing. So as you type in your expressions, you can kind of see how the transformation is going to go. OK. Um, before you move on to the analysis phase, another thing that you might want to do as part of the import process is actually um, combine a couple of data sets together. So there's something called um, reconciliation services. Um, there's a couple that are included. There are a bunch available that people have written. Um, VF is one that someone wrote. Open corporates, if you're reconciling against organization names. Um, Wikidata is a new um, Wikimedia-based um, online data service. They have a reconciliation service as well. So there's a whole bunch of things there. Once you have um, things matched up with those databases, then you can extract additional information and you can add more columns. Okay. And then on the output side, basically support the same set of, of formats as input. Um, additionally, support um, some custom JSON formats, some custom tabular formats. You can reorder columns um, quickly by easy, um, dragging and dropping, click them on and off. So even if you just wanted to import a spreadsheet, scramble the columns up and drop half of them, um, and that's all you wanted to do, you could do that really quickly um, with Refine. If you're working with linked data at all, um, there is an extension um, for dealing with um, RDF that was done at Derry and Galway, and will allow you to both do um, reconciliation against RDF files and Sparkle endpoints, as well as export your data as RDF triples. I've got a bunch of resources here, and more resources, and that is a whirlwind tour of Open Refine. Try and get us back on time. Um, I'll take like one or two questions if we have time, and then um, we'll move on. Went too fast for anyone to have a question. Does it have any GIS tools? Or it does not. It does have um, built-in support for um, JSON and XML parsing. So, um, you know, if you're dealing with like KML, is basically an XML format. If you're dealing with GeoJSON, um, supports that. But it doesn't have anything like, um, you know, basically geographic operators. So. You can uh, share this across devices. So if you run in one instance on your computer, you couldn't have, uh, have it somewhere else, like your same workflow on another workstation? Um, you can export the projects, but there aren't really good ways for people to um, share, share in real time. Unless you were to use, um, you could use a shared server. So although by default <coughs> um, the server runs on your desktop, you could run it in the cloud. Um, but you'd have to um, kind of externally arbitrate access so that you're not stepping on each other's toes and stuff. So. Okay, thank you very much.